This is Jared Lakefield, a novel by Don Fensler, Part 32, Phase 2, Part 3, Greatness. Jared Lakefield slid into greatness and the NBA was gradual and yet somehow sudden. It was like the Beatles, one day playing the most obscure fucking hole in the wall in Liverpool, which is St. Cloud, Minnesota, one day, and then playing Yankee Stadium in the Great Wall of China the next. The Clappers coach saw Jared destroy Willie Trombley. They saw something amazing before their eyes, but they weren't sure what their eyes were seeing was believable or sustainable. They told Jared to come back the next day to work out with the team, and he was even better the next day. He turned every L.A. Clapper one by one into a drooling, blubbering Willie Trombley. The coaches asked, why haven't we heard of you? Jared said, you probably have. They, they told him to come back the next day. He was even better. With Jared, it just got more fucking amazing day after day. This was beyond their imagination. The shots were going in from every angle. The frenzy. Grown men, NBA players, players who were superstars in college, each and every one of them stripped naked and stuffed into the fucking toilet like Charmin toilet paper. Of course, these clapper coaches, inheritor, inheritors of the worst franchise in the history of sports, went back to their office and checked their sources and read about Jared Lakefield's accomplishments at tiny little St. Cloud State. They read about the Duke game and remembered it vaguely, this player from an uh, obscure NAI school who took Dr. K and his giants and almost toppled them single-handedly. It had been on ESPN, even on Fox News, but was one of the thousands of news stories that are seen and heard and easily forgotten. But there, here was that story, this Jerry Lakefield, he was right in front of us. How was it different, they were thinking. Somehow it was different. Here we are with Jared Lakefield. Who is Jared Lakefield? A walk-on. The NBA doesn't work that way, they said to themselves, I'm sure. A guy uninvited shows up and picks on one of our lousier and stupider players and shows him up, but so what? The NBA doesn't work that way, they were probably thinking. We don't work that way, but can we send Jared Lakefield on his way? No, we cannot do that. Jared will stay and someone will st else will have to go, be sent packing. We don't know why. We thought we knew exactly what the roster would be, thought the coaches, I'm sure. But who could envision a Jared Lakefield? Who could envision a Jared Lakefield? life in San Diego. So now Jared Lakefield is a member of the San Diego Clappers and so are my wife and I, though highly, highly unofficial members. We were about as official as a doorknob on the third floor of the Staples Center. Jared put us in a very nice apartment in North East San Diego and I have no idea where he got the money. I have no, no idea why we are here even, of course. I know why Jared is here. He is the greatest basketball in the history of the game. He belongs here. Few of us knew that, but I know that. Jared Lakefield in the NBA, NBA is as natural as the deep blue sky and clean underwear on Sunday. But I have no idea why we are here, Jennifer and I. Why am I here? I have no fucking dad, dad blasted idea, but I know it is the right thing. Jennifer sometimes thinks I am insane, sometimes thinks I am the smartest person on earth, but I know it is the right thing to be here, for us to be here. And I know she knows it's the right thing or she wouldn't have come. Things are about to happen very quickly. I hate feeling my bones spinning out of control in a way, but all I had to do was look at Jerry Lakeville and I knew everything was actually very much under control. It was a very complex, Feeling, fucking feelings I was feeling right now to say the least. As I mentioned, I was totally fucking baffled as to why I was in San Diego with Jared Lakefield. I thought maybe I was going to be his private coach or trainer, but this was stupid. Coach or trainer for Jared Lakefield? You have got to be fucking kidding me. Me coaching Jared Lakefield at this point was like an Indian slug coaching Usain Bolt in the 100 yard dash. 
But I gradually came to see I was, I was there just, I was just to be there when he needed me. It's not that Jared was in over his head in San Diego, far from it, but he seemed to need someone to talk now, someone he never, see, something he never seemed to need back in Minnesota. I don't understand the lifestyle here, Michonne said. California, the Clappers, though the worst team in the NBA were all incredible athletes. The MLB and NFL had thousands of players in the ranks, but the NBA only had about 300. All superstars in college and able to do amazing things with the basketball. What Jarrett didn't understand was the California lifestyle, I suppose you could call it, the arrogance and the lack of gratitude for what they had. They were all making millions, some to just sit on the bench and give high fives to the starters. But in a way, they all had a right to be arrogant and grateful. They were the elite. They had earned it sometime in their life. God made them the elite, you could say. We were a bunch of haughty, stuck-up pricks. They were a bunch of haughty, stuck-up pricks. But God bless my soul, they had a right to be that way. And now, Jared was part of the elite. The first day of practice, he mainly just watched. He would be on the sidelines watching, taking it in. He was really watching, seeing what it was all about, studying the practice like a doctor studies an x-ray at the fucking Mayo Clinic. Intent, calm, non-judgmental. That was Jared Lakefield. But to be honest, he looked so small, so very small out here in California with these guys. It was like he had shrunk. A six foot two inch white guy, skinny and oh so quiet and calm among these giants, towering giants who could leap into the clouds if necessary and move as fast as panthers. He seemed so small. Jared got onto the court finally for a scrimmage and just hung out on the outside. If he got the ball, he passed it off right away. He seemed to want the ball during the scrimmage, but as soon as he got it, he passed it. I could see he was not playing, he was studying. Get the feel for what it would be like to play among these astonishing athletes, and not the funking peewee dorks we faced at St. Cloud State. This was a totally different world. Jared Lakefield was not intimidated, not in the least, but he was biding his time, I could see. Then suddenly got the ball, and I saw it in his eyes. It was time. He had studied enough during this scrimmage, and he took the ball and looked around him, and no one seemed to care, and he launched the ball, a high arching shot that looked like it might skim the ceiling. All eyes, clapper eyes, were on Jared, and then on the ball as it moved so slowly, slowly, slower than slow motion, upward, 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 then down, 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 and it seemed to explode into the net. This was just like what happened at last year at St. Cloud during that walk-on tryout, but now it was on a stage a fucking thousand, a thousand times bigger. And so it was 90 minutes into practice, practice that Jared Lakefield officially joined the NBA. It was during that scrimmage, that shot. There was some, there was some joking and some rude comments about the shot, about how lucky it was. But everyone in the new in the room had a feeling somewhere in the depth of their soul that luck had nothing to do with it that life in the NBA and everywhere else it would never be the same for the San Diego Clappers. They all had a feeling, but they didn't really understand it. Even I was amazed how fucking at home Jared Lakefield looked.